Today on our 2017 Kia Soul, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Takacha T1 vehicle wiring harness with 4-pole flat trailer connector, part number 118637. So here's what our wiring looks like when it's fully installed. It is going to stay on the outside of our vehicle at all times, and it'll be ready whenever we're ready to tow. It's going to provide us a 4-pole flat trailer connector, and it's going to give us all the required lights when we're going down the road pulling a trailer, such as your tail lights, turn signals, and brake lights. Now that we've shown you what it looks like after it's fully installed, let's show you how to install it. To begin our installation, we're going to need to come to the back of our vehicle and open up the hatch so we can gain access to our tail lights. Now on each side, our tail is going to have four fasteners holding it in place. I'm going to be using a Phillips head screwdriver to take it out. Now if we come to our tail light and we pull slightly towards the outside and rearward, we should be able to unlock our tail light from the tabs and pull it away from our vehicle. Now here on the back side, we're going to have our connector here that's going to connect to our vehicle. If we push in on this tab, we'll be able to pull out the connector and we can set our tail light aside. Now we're going to do the same thing on the passenger side as well. Now right below where our tail light sits, on our rear bumper, we're going to have a push fastener right here. Now if I take a flathead screwdriver, I can pop out the center section which will release some tension and then I can take out the bottom piece. And we're going to do that on both sides of our vehicle. Now if we come to our wiring harness here, our yellow and brown connector is going to be attaching to our driver's side. Now we got a couple different ways we can do this. We can connect our connectors and drop the rest of our harness down here, but I found it easier if we actually have something come down and we can pull it up. Now I'm going to take a piece of airline tube that I had laying around. That way I can fish it down through my bumper and the body of my vehicle. Now if you don't have any airline tube, you can use whatever you have laying around so long as it'll keep its structure, like a coat hanger for abs. So I'm going to feed this down. And once it reaches the bottom of the bumper, I'm going to attach my yellow wire. So now I'm going to take my airline tube, and I'm actually going to tape my connector to it. That way when I start pulling it up, I won't lose it. You may need to pull on the bumper just a little bit to help you get the connector through. Now we can remove the tape and remove the airline. Now before I make any of my connections, I'm going to put a small amount of dielectric grease in the connector and that's going to help any kind of moisture from building up inside and create any kind of corrosion. Now if you need some dielectric grease, you can pick some up on our website using part number 11755. Now we're going to take the connector from our vehicle, plug it into our wiring harness, and then we can take the other end and we can plug our tail light back in. Now with this connection made, we can go ahead and put our tail light back into position and we can put the fasteners back in place. Now at the bottom of our bumper, we're going to have our four pole wire and a red and green wire. Now we're going to need to route our red and green wire with a T connector over to the passenger side. Now everybody's going to do this a little bit differently. But I just want to mention you want to stay away from heat sources or any moving parts and I'll show you how I got mine over there. I just ran my wire on the back side of my hitch, zip tying it along the way, and now we're going to use the same technique with the fish wire going down from up top and attaching our wire to it. Now we can line up our passenger tail light and put the hardware back in place as well. Now the next step, we're going to need to find a spot to mount our converter box. Now in our kit, they do provide us with some double-sided tape that we're going to use to mount our box. So I can take one end of the backing off, and I can put it on the back of my converter box, making sure that it's nice and firmly secured. And I'm going to mount it right here on the back of the bumper on this flat spot here. So I can go ahead and take off the other side, and then I'm just going to push it firmly against the bumper or wherever you're mounting yours to make sure that it's going to stay secure. Now our white wire with the ring terminal is going to be for our ground. 
Now we're going to need to find a metal surface that we can attach this to. Now they do provide us with a self-tapping screw in our kit, and I'm going to be using a quarter inch nut driver to put it into place. Now we should have a red wire and our four pole wire left. Now we're going to need to attach the rest of our charge wire to this red wire here. In our kit they provide us with some buck connectors, but I'm going to be replacing them with a heat shrink buck connector for a little bit better protection against any corrosion. Now you can pick some of these up on our website using part number DW05745-5 for a pack of five. And I'm going to attach one end to the end of my red wire and crimp it into place. Then I'm going to strip back the end of the black wire they provided in my kit and I'm going to attach it to the other end of the buck connector. I'm going to be using a heat gun to shrink down my connector. I just want to mention if you are using an open flame, you want to make sure not to char the connector or the wires themselves. Now we're going to need to run our wire up to the battery at the front of the vehicle. Now everybody's going to do it a little bit differently. So let me run this and I'll show you how I did it. I just want to mention to stay away from any moving parts or heat sources. So I just ran my wire over my EVAP canister following the lines, went over the rear axle here, and I came down and I went around my fuel tank, went underneath this cover, and then I had my wire drop out right here. Now we need to go underneath the hood and we need to do the same thing we did with our tail lights and we're gonna drop something down so we can pull our wire up. Now the only thing I wanna mention is that you wanna be careful and you wanna stay as far away from the exhaust that you can because you don't wanna melt the wire. So I'm just going to put my wire inside my airline tube, put a little bit of tape so I don't lose it when I pull it up. Now when you're pulling your wire up, you want to make sure that you pull all the slack out. And it's always a good idea to double check and take a peek underneath, make sure a knot didn't get bundled up, and you think you pulled all the wire, but really there's a wad underneath. Now I'm going to put a zip tie right here, one to help secure the wire, and also make sure it doesn't drop down while I'm still working with it. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut my black wire and cut the excess off. And we're going to need to strip back the end of the wire here. I'm going to take another one of my buck connectors and I'm going to attach it to the wire. Now in our kit they do provide us with a fuse holder and it's going to be one solid looped wire so we're going to go ahead and cut it in half. Now we're going to need to strip back both ends of our wire. Now one, one end of our fuse holder, we're going to insert it into the yellow connector we just attached to our black wire. On the other end of our fuse holder, we're going to be attaching the ring terminal they provide in our kit. Now we're going to attach the ring terminal to the positive post on our battery. Now I'm going to be using a 10 millimeter socket to remove the nut on our battery. We'd slide our ring terminal over and then reinstall the nut. Now all we have left to do is tidy up our wires, put our fuse in, and make sure our lights are working. Now in order for us to get our cover closed on our battery terminal here, I moved my wire around the post and I'm just going to cut a small relief right here so that my wire can fit down and I can lock my cover. So you can just take a pair of side cutters or whatever you have just to cut the plastic just a little bit so you can make a little notch so that the wire can fit down in there and it won't inter interfere with the cover. Now the last thing we're going to need to do is get our four pole over to the center of our hitch. And I'm actually going to take the dust cover and attach it to my hitch. And then I'm going to take my excess wire and I'm going to tie it up behind my hitch here. So now all we have left to do is to test our wiring. So I'm going to take my four pole tester here. And if you don't have one of these, you can pick one up on our website using part number I26. I'm going to plug it in 
and then I'm going to have an extra set of hands and I'm going to have them run up to the front of our vehicle and start running our lights. All right, now can you turn on the headlights, please? Looks good. Left turn signal. Right turn signal. Hit the brakes. Now finally the brakes and turn signal. All right, with everything looking good, we're ready to hit the road. And that'll finish up our look at the Takancha T1 vehicle wiring harness with a four pole flat trailer connector, part number 118637 on our 2017 Kia. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.